Questions? <laughs> I have a question about the word jealousy. Yeah. I think of it as a negative thing. And mm -hmm. this is a jealousy that has positive results. So is that the same thing? I think it's it's a it's a very good question because obviously one of the Ten Commandments, number 10, uh, do not covet uh, thy neighbor's wife or house or donkey. I don't remember exactly, but do not covet is basically how we apply it. Um, I would distinguish here. Uh, maybe for, the, for at least for the moment, I will I will distinguish between covetousness and jealousy. Uh, just just to make some distinction between what I'm talking about. Sure. Let's define <laughs> covetousness as desiring a thing that somebody else has and wanting to get it by taking it from them. Right. Oh, and let's okay. define jealousy as wanting something that somebody else has and wanting to get it through holy means or non-sinful means. Like I, I don't have a person to receive salvation doesn't have to take it from somebody else. May, may the world be jealous of the salvation and the life that we have in Christ, uh, not seeking to take to strip it from us, but seeking to join into it with us. Mm -hmm. I also have, I also um, asked a question one time just while we're on the subject of jealousy of the difference between jealousy and envy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both words. Right. If someone described it as jealousy, like you did, wanting what somebody else has, or envy being not just wanting what someone else has, but wishing bad upon the other person because they have it. Exactly, exactly. Like, yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's not like, oh, I like that pencil. I would like that pencil. And then you go buy the pencil. That's not jealousy. It's wishing the pencil would break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want a pencil and I want theirs to just lose all its graphite. Um, and I, I want to be clear, if you look up jealousy and being covet and coveting in the dictionary, probably they're all just going to be synonyms. Uh, we're making a distinction as far as how we understand the word used in scripture. That's not the I've always related it to the um, a, at a wedding, the maid of honor and the flower girl are all envious <laughs> of the bride. <laughs> But they don't want them broken in half. <laughs> right. Where they, they're, and I think using the language of word that we're trying to use, they're jealous of the bride, but not envious would be the idea. Yeah, I think right. envious yeah. in modern is modern science. Yes. Yeah. I think <laughs> when, suffice it to say, and again, people, as you go and talk with people and use envy, covet, and, and jealous, uh, if somebody uses jealous and they don't mean it in the same way that, that we just talked about, don't correct them. It's just an English word. We're trying to understand a, a, a Greek word. But I think Annie but, hit it. It's wishing that it was you. Right. You know, but you aren't there yet, but the day will be coming. Right, right, exactly. Johnny. So in there it says that it brought wealth to the Gentiles. Could you clarify what it means by wealth? Riches, riches, and I do not, and that's why I try to clarify, it does not mean, thank you for asking the question. Um, it does not mean that those who come to Christ are suddenly blessed with uh, material prosperity. It means that those who come to Christ are blessed with knowing that they are, they are to inherit the riches of God, which is to be in the presence of the most holy God with the universe opened up to them for all eternity. Uh, which is God has the capacity to bring about what he wants to bring about. He is om omnipotent, as we say. He, has, he is all-powerful. Uh, and I am in relationship with that being, with that, with that person. Um, so no, not, not necessarily a blessing in, in material wealth, although uh, most everyone in this room, I would say, is, has been blessed with material riches, uh, at least by comparison to the majority world, as well as uh, the world history. Um, like even to, to live in such a house as this is an absurd material blessing, uh, it would seem. And yet the Lord has deemed it so. Uh, and so we thank God for, for when that does happen, but we don't expect it. It's not part of the gospel. Um, there are plenty of people in uh, sub-Saharan parts of Africa who are, are following Christ, filled with his joy and filled with, filled with his riches, who live in a mud hut. And, that is, and they are content because they have the riches of Christ within them and riches of Christ promised to them in the world to come. Fine. And that and that's beautiful. That's that's absolutely beautiful. It, yeah. It is not bad. No, it's not remotely. Like, sometimes we are like we say that it sometimes the world says it's bad that those people are living in mud huts, but they physically cannot support themselves if they lived in a giant house. So 
we, the, 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 the state of the world is as it is, and it's far more complicated to fix than a lot of people would like to have you believe. Yeah. It would be good if we could fix it. But yes. The world's a broken place. Yes. We do what we can. Romans chapter one. <laughs> Genesis chapter three. <laughs> I actually, I, I drive through Pembroke, and the house that I was born into is still there. And I drive by every now and then and look at it. And I realize that house is really smaller than this room. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were poor, you know, and as far as blessings go, yeah, it was a home. It was, it was, was, a, home. It was, it was a home. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I lived there till I was three or four, maybe. But it was like it's still standing. That it's that that's one thing for it. But you know, really, I'd say it's about two thirds the size of this room, mm -hmm. the whole house. Mm -hmm. You know, is anybody living there quietly? Yeah. And the Lord absolutely blessed you through that house. Right, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. And the, 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 the house is no bigger than it was when I was born. So thank you for clarifying, Johnny. By riches, I do not mean necessarily material wealth. Yeah, I assumed that, but I I just wanted to double check because yep. the Bible can sometimes pull you for a loop, and you're like, hmm? yes. what's going on here? And there are there are many gospels that will that will not not no true gospels, but yeah. there are people who will say when you come to Christ, you will if you have enough faith, then you will be blessed materially, and uh, they are charlatans and yeah. uh, serving the devil. Yeah, you so. will be returned to and, and, and all, all that. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then those people go ride around in beer jets and stuff. Right. No, it's yeah. uh, I, I don't I try to use the word disgusting rather sparingly. It's disgusting yeah. because they're using the name of Jesus for something profane. They, they just want they just want things to themselves, not us. Exactly. Other questions. Um yes, Sam. So thank you for raising your hand. Sorry. <laughs> there's something, there's something that you said, and I don't remember what it was, but it reminded me that you know that the average human lifespan is a hundred years. And the average is like seventy-five years, but yes. But let's just go for hundred, just to get my point across. Sure. So if that's the case, then. You know, I've already lived a fifth of my life. Mm -hmm. and In this life, yes. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just reminds me that, you know, life is precious on this world. But when you get to God, you know, it's even better. I, I think, I think what, what you're expressing is sort of the, it's one of the foundations of Christian hope that we have. What does Paul say in Romans 8? He says, I do not consider the sufferings of, of this world to even be in comparison to the glory that is to come, um, or even, even be comparable to the glory that is to come. We as Christians believe that this life, while precious and while God-given and should be used always and ultimately to his glory, uh, it is not the end. And we, we praise God that it is not the end and it is not, it's not how it's all supposed to be. Because yeah. he has a he has the new heavens and a new earth waiting in the wings for such a time as he deems uh, to to be with us in eternity. Yeah, I don't remember what it was that you said that reminded me of that, but, mm -hmm. but that's part of that's part of the riches that we are promised. That's actually yeah. as you bring it up. But even there, Sam, you know, the average lifespan here in the United States is 70, 72 years, something like that. Yeah. You know, but if you include the rest of the world, you're talking much lower than that. Mm -hmm. 30, 35. Oh, man. Okay. So, that means so right, that... right there, just simply being born in the United States is a blessing mm -hmm. that we've received. This is accurate. Yeah. And so we that... praise God for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a quote from Narnia. I believe it's the last book that. The adventures they have, like when Narnia was destroyed, because it's, it's very similar to how yes. the Bible is, um, how Narnia was destroyed, and those stories that was told in the books weren't 
the best stories. The stories afterwards were even better because everything was way much better. Okay? Yes. So it's like this story, this life is not going to be as good as the one in heaven. Yes. Not even close. Not mm -hmm. because we won't be like without yeah. pain and stuff, but we'll, we'll be with God and stuff forever. So, yeah. Yes, indeed. Also, spoiler alert to the Boucher's. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, one more question if we have one. If not, we'll go to announcements. I got a chance.